I got into this way back in the 70s. I uh, went to Cornell and I took the beekeeping course at Cornell kind of as a gut course. It was, I thought, going to be an easy A. Turns out it was really interesting. It was a harder course than I thought and it was a lot of fun. After uh, I finished college, I ended up uh, getting a hive just because I thought it was really interesting. So I kept bees in the late 70s, early 80s and got busy and all that, let, let the whole thing go. Two years ago, I retired and got back into, I was looking for new hobbies, got back into beekeeping. My first hive, they were very strong and I didn't know, I didn't remember that much. Anyway, that first year didn't go so well. They swarmed and they, they swarmed late in the year and they call that a suicide swarm because the bees um, kind of split up Neither side has enough uh, supply for the winter. Anyway, sure enough, that hive died in the winter. And so last year, I bought two packages, started all over again, successfully split them off, turned them into three hives, and they all three survived the winter, and I'm so proud. I think making it through the winter, kind of the thing that makes you a good beekeeper, or at least you, you prove you can do it. First, I'm gonna light my smoker. This is not the accepted way to light your smoker. Most people, you should do it with a, a regular match. I, uh, I'm a little impatient, so I use uh, the torch. A uh, smoker is a um, kind of a key beekeeping piece of equipment. The, uh, the smoke is actually kind of like a narcotic to the bees. It, it calms them and it confuses them a little bit and it makes them want to go eat. So they go back to the honey and they start engorging and that calms them down. Well, I'm going to open, I have three hives. I'm going to open them up and I'm looking for several things. I want to see how the queen is laying. If the, the, the queen is, there's one bee in the whole hive that lays eggs and that's the queen. And if you don't have a queen and you don't have eggs, you don't have baby bees and you don't have any kind of uh, growth going on in your hive, it's going to die. So first of all, to make sure it's called, it's called queen right. You want to make sure the queen is there and laying eggs. And actually there's a lot, the eggs turn into brood and the brood is basically capped little larvae that are growing. And it takes, I think, it's either 12 or 14 days for the brood to for an egg to turn into a to brood and then into a baby bee. That's a better look at the brood, those uh, capped off cells, but it's very spotty. That to me means the queen is not laying very consistently and she may be an older queen and maybe kind of weak. That is bad, the way they built that comb. What I think was there was too much space up there between the frames and they weren't following the foundation. They were just building random comb because they had the room. And I shouldn't have let them do that. So this other side is better, but this business where they've got comb kind of above the foundation is bad. This is a queen cup right here, and this is a queen cup. And they, the worker bees make the cup and the queen decides whether to put an egg in there or not. But if she does, the worker bees will feed it uh, royal jelly and they'll turn it into a queen. It's the way that the bees replace the queen, basically. Last year, I harvested uh, about three and a half gallons, and I don't know how many pounds that is, but it sells for around $10 a pint. So you can, you can really make your money back um, probably not the first year, but the second year and from then on, you, you're, you're harvesting enough honey to really pay, pay for your hobby. And the big guys actually do it for a living. So you can scale up to as big as you want and, and basically make money or just keep it as a hobby.